every contact leaves a trace, but not all of it can be seen by the naked eye. One of the most crucial aspects of locating evidence at a crime scene is the use of proper lighting. Investigators, therefore, need as much light as possible to avoid missing evidence. And there are many different lighting options available for use at crime scenes, from a simple handheld torch to a high intensity LED lamp designed to light entire rooms. Now, to give us an insight into all of these lights is Stephen Murphy from Copper Tree Forensics. So, Stephen, can you tell me a little bit about the the different types of light sources there are to use at a crime scene. Okay, so we design and man manufacture both uh, laser, class four laser and LED light sources. Um, and all light sources break down into different wavelengths across the spectrum and, and basically see that you, what you can't see at different wavelengths and from different perspectives. So for example, if you were investigating a, a possible sexual assault, then you would look at a particular wavelength that might fluoresce uh, semen and saliva and things like that. So there's different wavelengths that, act, that do different things, basically. So when we talk, when we talk about wavelengths, um, obviously we kind of look at it when we're actually on the ground as different colours, don't we? So yeah. can you go run through the colours for me? I mean, in, in, in basic terms, uh, in terms of uh, the forensic investigation torch range that we have, for example, is in layman's terms, you have, a, say, a blue, um, 445 nanometers, and the, the green, and then white. So you, you can go into the UV spectrum as well. And so you can go all through the spectrum. But what you tend to have is three or four main light source waves that you would look at to, to look at different things at the crime scene. I mean, one of the most people will, if they're not in forensic science themselves, will think of CSI and how they go into a room and suddenly the whole place is filled with luminescent and it's so bright. I mean, when I was back in the day, you know, I had to go with my colleague into a bathroom that has two of us that used a tiny torch. So, I mean, which which way are we now <laughs> in the world of forensic okay. science? Yeah, I think what you're probably referring to is probably a UV, basic UV torch that I think. Um, on, on sort of CSI programs, they might get a, a UV torch out and find every kind of different kind of trace, whether from blood to, to saliva to semen to, to, to everything. And, and wavelengths simply don't work like that. You know, they don't, a single wavelength doesn't locate every single trace that you might be hoping to find. So you would, it's a multi wavelength discipline basically. So for, uh, for different things from, from plastics to rubber to, um, human biological traces to fibres, you would be needing different wavelengths to, to locate and then recover those, those uh, traces. And that, that sounds like you are going to be taking in your kit a whole range of torches. And some of them are obviously going to be quite heavy, aren't they? People are yeah. worried about health and safety as well. Like, well, how do you make sure that people are covering their challenges for once, to make sure they have the right life, but secondly, aren't worried about their safety? Okay, so what the big challenge we had, uh, we'll, if we talk about the class four laser for a second, which essentially, uh, talking about laser, is that they are, if you like, the, the Rolls Royce of, of the light source world, because they are, 445, for example, will be a pure wavelength at that and be very powerful. But with that brings health and safety concerns because of, of, of basically laser being very, very powerful. Uh, and, you know, if not, um, used properly and correctly and followed procedures, you know, can cause damage. So what we made sure we've done is make them as small and portable and lightweight and easy to use as possible and give them multi-wavelengths. So instead of, as you, keep, you said back in the day, you would have bought a single wavelength laser and had to literally wheel it in on a trolley to just have access to one wavelength. Whereas now we have handheld, literally handheld lasers with three and four wavelengths so you can go through the spectrum and go through a crime scene and, and locate everything you need to with one unit, which is a complete change from how it used to be. And, you know, obviously, a lot of the, you talked about right at the beginning there with the different light sources, we looked at you know, uh, sexual assaults, uh, uh, semen left and blood. I mean, do you have an, an example where one of your products has, has seen something that it's not there? Yes. Yeah, so... I think what, what, and if we go back to LED, which um, just, just to explain slightly, they tend to be slightly less powerful 
uh, light sources and they, they're not as, for want of a better phrase in layman's terms, not as pure as if, uh, we talked about 445 for sexual assault. Additionally, a, an LED 445 will go from 415 to 480 nanometers, so a quite wide divergence. So the pure, purity isn't there and, and it tends to be not as powerful. So what we what we did is give give our LED lights more power and tighten the wavelength. So effectively, they're more like a laser, but without the health and safety concerns. And what we've found is that this extra quality and power enables uh, a CSI, even in bright sunlight, to locate traces of the scene, which, which has happened um, up and down the country now um, from uh, at different scenes whereby if they were using traditional uh, lights they had previously, they wouldn't have found when, when they have now with the, with forensic torches. I mean, well, that's a valid point there, because that's completely changed from when I was uh, doing CSI work. We had to have a dark room, we had to make sure all the lights were off, uh, even to get, like, as I said, I had to be in a bathroom with, with my colleague. They like, are very close, yeah. and wouldn't be allowed to do that these days, social distancing. But I mean, that's, that's already like, come so far. Is there something even further that you're planning on like going with? Yeah, I, I mean, that, that, that is essentially the issue previously, in that you're almost at a crime scene for, from anything from murder, you know, down to volume crime, would need to create almost lab conditions to be able for the LED lights to work. And even, even now, we would still say, if you can darken a room to the best of your ability, then you're going to get the best results. But what these lights enable you to do is even if you can't, because most crime scenes aren't perfect scenarios and you have to deal with whether it's outside or there might not be curtains or lights or you might not have the kit, full kit to blacken a room so what what we need to do is make sure that the kit csis have on the front line is fit for purpose at any of those imperfect crime scenes and that's where the, the power and quality of the forensic torches now enables them to go arrive at a crime scene and search and screen a scene straight away instead of waiting for night time or for the kit that they haven't got or to blacken a room. And so, so, that, so you're not going to miss vital evidence or if the scene, if things going on at the scene, you're not going to miss that and, and lose vital evidence, basically. I mean, that's everything a crime scene examiner could possibly want there. And it isn't just a case that you've just decided that, you know, to change the wavelengths and to improve them. You've been working with actual CSIs, haven't you? Oh, it's it's been a, um, a a long process in terms of what we've wanted to do is go to speak to uh, forces up and down the country, um, organisations like the DSTL and CAST to to understand. We had a core sense of products, but what we wanted to do is find out because when you have a design team, they have fantastic ideas, but they might not always be practical. And what you need is the pra practical applications of what these things do. So we spent uh, over two years talking to forces across the country, organisations like the DST, as I say, to understand what they want, not what we thought they wanted. And I think that's, that's where, where we are now, is that we have a product range that CSIs on the ground want and need and, 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 and can apply on a daily basis. I think the only a shame in a, in a way is that obviously forces up and down the country aren't all on the same page. And I know from my experience going to different forces to different forces, one might have this amazing technology and you know some forces are inventing their own technology and then some others are, are still stuck in the dark ages. I mean, is there, do you think there's any way to get past that? I mean, realistically, the only way to do that would be to have a, a single force that covered the country, the UK. That's that's never never going to happen. So what we do is build relationships over long periods of time, uh, so they trust us and we trust them to, to to engage with them and understand what they need. And, and in fairness, you know, some forces have different might be different requirements. So there is it isn't necessarily a uniform need, although. You know, because applications of the same technology can be different in different forces for different reasons. So that's why these relationships are very important. And so that we understand what each individual force needs from what, what we're doing. So, so yes, I, 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 I think it's, it would be wonderful to have one, one force and, and everything be on an even playing field. But realistically, with 43 forces and other forces as well, there's never going to be that. 
scenario. So best the next best thing is to ensure that we work with each individual for their individual needs as a force, I think. And obviously it's not just you know forces because lights can look at find accelerants, they can find um dis well, diseases, I guess, viruses or something that's left on. And obviously you're not just working with forces, are you? No, so what, what we've found is I think that with especially with the LED lights, that the flexibility that and the power and quality that they bring has basically opened up lots of sectors that we're now working with, from from the sort of NHS to facilities management, um, to uh, asbestos removal, to cleaning companies, because because you can use these torches safely, but they're very powerful, so they're like tra things like traces. So if you've got a medical facility and you need to, that to be clean, torches can locate anything from bacteria to human biological traces, so that you can target clean that, that area and ensure that, uh, that the area is clean, for, for forensically clean, as opposed to because it's locating things you cannot see with the naked eye and enabling then a cleaner, for example, to target, clean it, and make sure that it is actually removed as opposed to um, just being moved around that you would later see then with, with, with the lights. So yeah, it's, it's opened up many, many new sectors. And so that's, but we also like to do that backed up with um, research and working with universities. We don't just want to, I can sit here and say that it does these marvelous and magnificent things, but what we always like to do is work with universities up and down the UK as well. Um, get the real life issues and problems from whether it's a crime scene or facilities management or whatever the scenario and actually get it researched, get, it pro get a project on it, get the results and validation and then we can go to, to market and say hey, this is what these lights do um, and, and that's, that, that in itself is a, is a journey as well. <laughs> Yeah, that we, one example you've got there is the what university that you're working with um, in the sexual assault centres. Uh, so yep. uh, obviously when someone has uh, been affected by sexual assault, there, there could be cross-contamination from patient to patient. You know, how did you, you know, why would you even think about that really? And how did that le lead to make sure that it's forensically cleaned? So I, I think that's part and parcel of, of, of the sort of blue forensic torch um, being designed for sexual assault investigation from a crime scene perspective. The knock-on effect of that is, is, as you say, with sexual assault referral centres, uh, a user will be, be medically examined and then and taken away, and then there's a cleaning scenario to happen, and then a, a next examination. Now, the concern is, is about um, traces being left between examinations and the big cost transfer and basically miscarriages of justice is always a concern with that. So we worked with Professor Casella at Staffordshire University and Mountain Healthcare and uh, basically did a whole uh, stream of, of projects and research towards that very end, which basically ended up in, in Professor Casella uh, presenting that to the Chartered Society of Forensic Science. Um, and it basically highlighted that even if, if with an environmental clean, you, if you think you've cleaned it, you might just be moving it around because if you cannot vis, vis, visualize what the trace is with your eyes, and actually if you've got a, a, a torch, with, like, like the forensic torch, that can locate it and give you the eyes to see it and then clean it properly, that then helps towards make, trying to make sure that the cost of transfer doesn't happen. And then of course, hopefully, that then you know, that eradicates the possibility of miscarriages of justice as well. Well, you know, that's everything that can do to improve cross, uh, stop cross-contamination and trace evidence being spread around is brilliant. But taking that on a bit of a like upside down approach, because people, if they wanted to buy one, like it's someone to clean their apartment, for example, yeah. of uh, something that they've done terribly. I mean, you know, are you worried about it getting into the wrong person's hands? I, 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 I think that they um, are scientific instruments that are not just throw away torch price you, you, these are investments and um, I would be surprised if, if somebody was, was going to on the basis of, of that premise invest in a torch that we would have the records for and you know make sure that um, you know we give that information to any force that might be interested in a certain individual so I think that that isn't necessarily, that's not to say a concern, um, but you know, I think that the more 
the, uh, these lights are used at crime scenes, the more traces are found and the more convictions. And, and then, you know, I, I, especially with sexual assault, I think that, you know, these really do raise the standard of the quality and ability to investigate those crimes, which is, is obviously what everybody wants. 100%. Well, thank you so much, Stephen, for coming to talk to me about lights. And obviously, if anybody wants to look at more stuff that Coventry Friends is doing, you can check it out in the link below. And don't forget, you should subscribe to the channel so that you can see all the latest forensic lessons here at Bedroom Forensics.